we're going to be talking about drawing a diagram, right? In the methods of data collection, there's always one compulsory remark for drawing a diagram. If you look at your paper, you'll be given a little space for you to draw a diagram that best illustrates how that experiment should be conducted or how that experiment should be designed. So firstly, you see a space to draw a diagram, like I mentioned. I would highly recommend that you first list all the methods of data collection first, and then you draw the diagram later. So if you're writing your paper, rather I would say, define the problem, write the methods of data collection before you talk about the diagram first. Because I think you, if you draw the diagram last, you have much more of a clearer picture as to what the question um, is actually about. And you can therefore be able to draw a very reasonable diagram. Um, so there's some common tricks that we will also talk about, and you should be mindful of that. Remember, not everything should be drawn. I don't see the reason, for example, to draw a calipers, right? That doesn't really make sense to me, but other things you can include. So let us walk through a couple of examples so that you see how can you think, put yourself in my frame of thinking when I see a diagram that needs to be drawn how exactly do I think or structure that so first example is May uh, June 2016 question paper 52 an inclined plane problem and again if you see the document that I'm using if you really want access to that I would highly recommend that you check up down in the um, description below you can be able to access a free version of that um, so that you can be able to see a trial version of the of the PDF um, and I hope that it can be really helpful so that you guys can be able to um, answer your paper 5 much more effectively so let's start with it so a given a student that investigates the acceleration a of a trolley moving up an inclined plane um, so the student investigates the relationship between the acceleration and the angle theta um, it is suggested that the relationship is given by that equation where G is the acceleration of free fall and M is the mass of the trolley. So by looking at that equation, I'm thinking to myself, um, I'm seeing F. So I'm asking myself, well, if I'm drawing a diagram, how can I show how F is acting? I'm seeing an inclined plane. If I'm doing a diagram, how can I show, if I'm drawing a diagram, how can I show how that plane is situated? Remember, Practically, you can't just have a plane suspended in the air. That doesn't make sense to me. So if I look at this, I'm going to start off by drawing a bench, right? I do that and I draw my bench. Then I'm going to draw my inclined plane and I label it inclined plane. Cool. Then I'm going to draw my little trolley over there. I draw my little trolley. Then I'm going to ask myself, how can this trolley be dragged by a particular force? If I think about it, I could have a rope and have another mass on the other side. Um, and that is the mass um, that can help me uh, produce the force F that will be in this question. So I can just have a little rope and then I arrive here. Then I put a little pulley over there, right over here at the edge here. Attach a pulley onto that particular system. Then I go like this and then I put my mass over there. And then I say mass, let's say X to be a little bit fancy. Okay, cool. And then I now want to support my inclined plane. There are two methods for supporting. Either I just put like that, I just put something like this, then I say this is my support, okay? Or you can put a series of bricks, right? One, two, three, four, five. That could be also your support. Or you can put something like this, a little diagram that I normally draw, something just like that, um, or something like this. Then we call this our support. Cool. Right. And then um, to measure the angle, theta, I'm going to draw something like that. Then I'm going to elaborate my protractor. And that will be it. That's the diagram that I need. If you look at the marking scheme, they just want a diagram of showing inclined plane with labeled support. Um, and you should have some vertical support to do that. And that's all they need. This is literally the only marking point that appeared in this question for the diagram. So please, do not overthink this. Draw a simple diagram that showcases everything that you're going to need. Let's do another example. So you see that you don't really have to overthink this, right? Um, winter 2015, question paper 5.3, a simple temperature experiment. You're given a beaker containing water and um, some metal bricks that are present as well. So you have those metal bricks. And the student is using an electrical heater to produce a particular temperature increase. It is suggested that the electrical energy supplied to the heater is related, is related to the mass M of the metal blocks. Uh, by the above relationship. So I'm asking myself, I'm seeing a heater, how can that heater get power? 
how can I be able to get electrical energy to power that particular heater? So what I'm going to do, always when you have diagrams, is imitate the original shape or the original diagram that you have initially. So in this question, I start again with my little bench like that. Then I draw my bowl like that. Then I put my little blocks inside. Then I put my heater like so. So the moment I put my heater, I'm thinking to myself, to get electrical energy is VIT. I'm going to need V. I'm going to need I. So I need to draw some setup that has a power source, number one. Number two, a way of measuring the ammeter reading so that I can get the current. And number three, the way of measuring the voltmeter reading so that I can get the voltage. So if I try to connect this system, I can just go up and up and just put, let's say, a switch, for example, to make it a little bit fancy. Um, then I put my DC power source. I label that DC power source. And then I put my ammeter over there so that I can measure the current in this system. Um, then if I go there, I put my voltmeter in parallel. Um, then I go there, I can put a variable resistor to be fancy again. I label that variable resistor. Um, the whole point is that so that I can keep everything constant. If I increases, I can change the resistance and all of that. Um, but you don't really need to include it, um, really. Then I connect that, and then that's it. So that's the circuit that I'm drawing to measure I and V. And I'm including it in the diagram because I'm thinking to myself, how can I create a workable diagram that showcases how the heater works? I can't just leave the heater alone. I have to show how can the heater actually work in this question. Then I put my liquid over there. Then I put a lead, for example, to improve insulation. And then I need to include a thermometer to actually measure temperature. So I draw my thermometer in. And then I include a stirrer, if you want to be fancy as well. Stirrer just basically helps you stir the mixture and to ensure uniformity um, in the temperature. So you're seeing that the way I was able to solve this question was really just relying on the knowledge and the skills that I have um, for temperature questions. If I see a newer temperature question where I'm heating the water, I know for a fact. Start with that, draw the lead, start, put the thermometer, put a voltmeter, ammeter, switch, and all of that, liquid, and label every single thing. Remember, every single thing must be labeled. A common mistake I see students make is they don't imitate, number one, what they were given in the original question. Number two, they create diagrams that are fishy, that are not working uh, efficiently. Or number three, they really create, or they just create diagrams or produce diagrams that have missing labels. And a mark that you can be able to get if you're just able to include uh, the labels. So really, guys, be mindful of that um, when you're making or when you're calculating these questions. Um, another example, I'm just now going to showcase this one and not really go through the process, but it's from winter 2010, question paper 5.1, right? You're given um, a student investigating uh, sort of electromagnetic induction, how the EMF induced in one coil varies or, or, or depends on the frequency of current in another coil. So you're seeing that I need to measure frequency in one coil. Um, so I'm going to include my coil. And then after that, um, I'm going to have the, the thing to measure frequency. So you can see that in coil Y, I'm including a CRO to measure frequency. And then for the other part, where the EMF is going to come from, I need a generator to introduce an alternating frequency because that creates induced EMF. And then I So signal generator, um, that's something that's very, very important for you to uh, measure or rather for you to talk about how frequency can be measured or how alternating current can be produced. So if you don't know what that is, I'm showing it on the diagram now. It's basically a way in which um, I'm showing it on the screen right now. It's basically a way in which we can be able to produce alternating current, alternating EMF. And that's very, very important in this kind of questions. Um, another example, that's winter 2023, question paper 5.2. You're given that particular system, you're seeing a pulley, you're like, the pulley can't just be suspended in air, right? I was seeing students once of the question, and they were actually leaving out a pulley um, in this question. And I was like, what's going on, guys, right? So that's me including a pulley, and then me including a meter root, a retort stand, and the way uh, in which I can be able to measure the value of H, to put a little pointer to make H more effective. I put a little lid to make the oil, or to avoid the oil from falling and toppling over. Um, and then that's it, right? The marking scheme just says I need a pulley supported by a stand, a stand placed on the surface or the bench, and a minimum of two labels, right? That's all I need to do. Look at your diagram and be like, what's missing? How? What can I draw to make this diagram functional? If it's a second question, what second can I create to make this more, uh, more, more visually um, presentable or more workable?
uh, if so you may um the last one is for may june 2024 you are hitting one end of a road and then a stationary wave or sound is produced then you're supposed to measure that sound and if you look at the diagram that i had i put it stand i just drew a stand then i had to wait i needed a way to support the road but i knew that i can't just include something i can't just have a road standing on the bench or somewhere there i have to have a road supported by wires or supported more so by elastic bands right so i towed my road like that then i need a way to measure the sound and get the frequency and you can see, I, like I said before in the last video, if you didn't watch it, go back and watch it again. But you use a microphone and a CRO uh, to record the frequency of the sound. So I use that and I use a little con to ensure that the sound is directly filtered or goes down through that and goes to the microphone or goes to the CRO. Right? Then you have a wooden block um, that's there to just support that con. Right? So... You don't have to overthink it. Again, this one, all they needed was a rod supported by string, a clamp attached to the stand, um, and two labels that were present, either a hammer, a microphone, a clamp, a rod, or the string itself. So the trick with these questions, drawing a diagram, as, as we'll be concluding method of data collection, is number one, start by listing how you're getting each variable. What equipment are you using to calculate that? And number two, draw the diagram that's going to help you be able to solve these kind of problems now i hope you can do diagrams a bit better the trick is practice keep on drawing these diagrams and you become better at solving these kind of problems check out also examination reports they tell you in depth what some students included what other students didn't and see how alternatively some diagrams could have been structured um, you should be able to access them i put a link um, in the description below that's a very good resource where you can be able to access papers and the examination report. Love that website to death. That's the whole point, right? Under this, you should be able to get four or five marks and a method of data collection, which concludes the second part of our video series. What you need to do, don't overthink it. Draw a workable diagram. If it's a ruler, put it. If it's clamped, do it. If it's a, a pulley, what's supporting it? If it's an inclined plane, is it supported? If it's a heater, What's the circuit showing it? If it's electricity, what circuit are you putting? If it's sound, do you have a CRO? If it's frequency of a magnetic, for example, magnetic field, do you have a signal generator, for example, that helps produce an alternative EMF to begin with? What are you doing? That's the whole point of uh, drawing the diagram to help the examiner better see how they could, or how the question could have better uh, been structured. So that's basically it, right? And in the next uh, video, which I highly recommend that you check out, which is the third part, we're going to be covering method of analysis. So please, check out that video. Thank you guys for watching this one. I hope you can now be able to do diagrams a little bit better, and I'll see you guys in the next one.